Thank you, Bob. Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you here to the Center of Unity. We hope you had a great Christmas. I know we did at our house. It was, it was a lot of fun with all the kids, and we hope you did as well. And so we just want to invite you here this morning to, to uh, experience this moment with us, experience these few minutes. And uh, this, this first song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, it, it just, it's asking, you know, that God reveal himself to us in our heart when we open up our heart we can we have that vision of what he wants for us this coming year so we ask that 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 would be placed in your heart this morning that, that what he wants us to be this this next year what he wants me to be that that we'll find that this morning open the eyes of my heart lord Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see you open the eyes of my heart lord Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Thank you, Jeff and Bob, and good morning, everyone. So glad you're here with us. You know, whether you've been attending these Sunday experiences at Center of Unity for many, many years, or you're just now discovering us, we're glad that you're with us. We hope that you feel our welcome and our desire to have you come and be whatever active part you can be a part in this time and as we move forward into 2021 in a more active way as we begin to discover this Sunday experience face to face and hug to hug once again. But we're happy that you're here right now. We indeed hope you had a wonderful Christmas celebration. I am so grateful to all the people who were here on Christmas Eve who helped us present to you a beautiful experience of what that feels like to have and to celebrate new birth in our lives. And I wanted to extend a special thank you to Sherry Pratt. She, I left her off the list, and boy, we could do nothing without Sherry here. She is our sound person extraordinaire, and we are grateful for all that she brings to this experience. Today, we are going to open our hearts and our minds and our souls to how it is that we are being called to experience this upcoming year, who it is that we are being asked to embody, what is that quality that we want to express as we move through our daily lives. It's called the White Stone Ceremony. You're going to hear a little bit more about that in a little while, but I brought a few of my White Stones here from previous years just to give you some idea. This one, in that year, I was being called to be spiritual support. One year, 
I was being asked to be willing, and some years I get two words, willing and trust were my two ways of being in that particular year. This was authentic joy. I remember this year, this was the year after a very difficult year of loss. And I wanted to be and experience that authentic joy once again. Faith and oneness was another one of my years here. That's just to give you an idea. And you will need something to write on when we get to that place a little later in the service. So if you've gotten a stone through the uh, Christmas care packages that we offered you, um, you'll want to have that out today and something to write on. Or you can just have a piece of paper and jot it down and then find your own perfect stone to um, add your word to and keep it in a place that helps remind you of this day and what spirit moved and asked you to step into. So we are grateful. We know it's going to be a beautiful morning. Glad that you're here and grateful for what unfolds as we move forward. And so let us just begin as we center ourselves into this time and into this experience with an opportunity just to center ourselves fully into our minds and into our hearts so that we can truly receive all that is being offered to us today. We are grateful for each person here in this sanctuary that supports this service, and we are grateful to each person who has tuned in as they also say yes, yes to this new way of being in this new year. We anticipate great good unfolding as the months unfold in 2021. And we celebrate that this is the year that we really get to feel grateful for and appreciate our oneness and being able to express that in a very close and tangible way. And so we just say thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Taylor. Here at Center of Unity, we have a mission and a vision statement. And I know you're asking yourself at 1035 in the morning, what is a mission and vision statement? Simply put, a mission statement reflects the here and now, what we do in this reality. Ours is we inspire spiritual growth through prayer, education, and sacred service. A vision statement looks forward to how we see ourselves in the future. Ours is centered in God. We envision a world free of judgment and full of love. Vision is the dream. Mission is the reality. Core values that support our mission help us reach our vision. Joy is one of our core values. The met metaphysical meaning of joy is the happiness of God expect expressed through his perfect idea, man. Joy is strength giving when the mind is fixed on ideas of the spirit. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Today's daily word is release. I take the best and leave the rest. My experiences of this past year have brought me gifts of insight, new perspectives, many chances to grow and stretch myself, and perhaps the development of skills that serves me in my work or brings greater enjoyment to my leisure time. Some experiences have been painful or difficult. These two have offered their gifts. I accept that all has come my way with gratitude 
I bless it all. I find the gifts and release what no longer serves my growth. Assured that God is my dependable source, I release any pain of a financial setback. In the joy of restored health, I release any memory of illness. Grateful for all modes of connection, I release any pain of loneliness. I move forward feeling lighter, cleansed, and renewed for my journey forward. Do not remember the former things or consider things of old. Isaiah 43, 18. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, what So as we move into this white stone ceremony, I would invite you, if you have the white stone that either we've passed out to you or that you have found for yourself, and just hold it during this message because this stone is also going to help inform you. The stones that we gave out, these little white stones, come from Israel, and they've been mined between Hebron and Bethlehem. We purchased them from a company that's in Kansas. And there's a little history about how these stones and their um, uh, coming into being in unity ceremonies came about. The owner and the founder of the company called Jerusalem, with the USA in capital, stone company, his name was Sam Natchum, and he was born in a mountain village near Jerusalem. So this is his 
um, home. He was a poor student, but he was very interested in the arts and eventually found an apprenticeship with a watchmaker. And at the age of 18, he met a foreign exchange student. Her name was Dana, and she was from the Kansas City area. And despite their initial language barrier, barrier, because he spoke almost no English and she spoke almost no Hebrew, they found this language of love that allowed them to carry their relationship and cement it during Dana's time in Israel. They continued to write after Dana returned home and after finishing his time in the army, he bought a one-way ticket, that is an affirmation right there that he was ready to come and, and build a life with her to Kansas City. He learned the language, he became a citizen, and he and Dana were married. And then he experienced some significant health challenges and it ended the work that he had been doing here in the United States, which was rehabbing old houses. He was just physically not able to do it. And while sitting and asking for his own guidance about what was next for him, he got the idea to bring his beloved stone to this country. So the company was founded in 1995. It provides all different kinds of stone for kitchens, for bathrooms, for outdoor projects, and it ships to many areas all over the world now. In the early 90s, a unity minister by the name of David Williamson, and he had a church in uh, Hollywood, Florida, came up with this idea of the white stone ceremony, and he reached out to this company to see if they would make these smaller versions of the stone that comes from the Holy Land to be used in that ceremony. And so since 1977, we have business, at least a once a year business, to Jerusalem, USA, in Kansas City, because there are unity churches all over not only this country but the world who now embrace this process in which we can not only move into the year in a new way as we use our visioning and our affirmation skills, but to know the significance of this stone in our history of humanity. I'm going to share a little bit about that. Um, in just a moment here. So the white stone ceremony that was developed came out of the passage in Revelations. It comes from the second chapter and the 17th verse. And this is when we're told in that dream state that on this white stone there would be a new name known only to us. The source of this white stone comes from the times when Jesus walked the planet, and even before that, and it was certainly in use long after he was no longer physically here with us. And its significance was that when a, pr a prisoner was released um, from his incarceration, or a slave was given their freedom, they were given a white stone. And the white stone symbolized their freedom from bondage. It symbolized their ability to be a part of society in a new way. And it symbolized that they had indeed paid their debt and they were now free to go and create and discover and, and be an active participant in all that was around them. That person was now free to move from one place to another. They were free of any restrictions that had been previously placed upon them. You know how sweet is this connection as we reflect and sometimes still are in that heavy discussion about our own freedoms and how those show up in life and how we can express them and how they allow us to step in and be and express in ways that perhaps Society in the past had told us we were not allowed to do. I don't know if any of you can relate to a time when you've had a spiritual awakening, one that released you from the prison. Sometimes it's the prison of addiction. Sometimes it might be the prison of our own limited beliefs. Sometimes it might be a prison of our own feeling of unworthiness 
that has kept us from being free to be who we have been brought onto this time and into this place to express. And when you finally discover that that freedom exists, that you can change that, that you can release that, what a feeling of weight that gets lifted off of our own spirits, off of our own limitations that we have in many ways given to ourselves or, or given our own bondage that has kept us from moving beyond those. How wonderful it is to understand this truth that we can be free. And it all lies within each of us. Perhaps one of the greatest unity teachings that we offer is that we create oftentimes the prison that we feel ourselves confined by in our own minds, through our own thoughts, through our own feelings. And we also then hold the key to its freedom. It's certainly not something that's unique to unity. We see other great philosophers, others who have discovered this sense of freedom that perhaps they haven't even associated with God or with spirit. It's found in writers like Viktor Frankl. Even while he was imprisoned in a Nazi concentration camp, he knew that the one freedom he had left was the freedom to choose what he thought and how he felt. It is the one thing that they could not take away from him. You know, as we move from one year to the next, perhaps it's not as dramatic as when we discover our own freedom from something that has been holding us in and limiting us from doing what we want to do. But yet, each time we are willing to step in and to say, I have the ability to choose, to see life, and to be in the midst of life in new ways. It is a powerful celebration. And we want to claim it as often as we can. And certainly, this annual tradition is one way to do that. The verse that Reverend Williamson built this ceremony upon is found in the second chapter of Revelations. And, you know, we don't really know who wrote the book of Revelation. It's usually attributed to the Apostle John, but modern scholars who have studied the history of the Bible and the history of the times and the places that it was written in doubts that anyone who was living in the time of Jesus actually wrote the book of Revelation, but it was written sometime later, and it was written in a time where the people were really feeling that sense of bondage. And it was a dream about how they would be released from that bondage through God. Most agree that this book is apocalyptic, which simply means that it's one that designates the end of time, that The end of time may not necessarily mean the end of all living beings, but the end of a time when, as a humanity, this experience of bondage would end. But in the Greek meaning of apocalyptic, what we discover is that it really means, as its core, a disclosure of knowledge or a lifting of a veil. It is that experience that we have when we no longer are limited to seeing life from just the lens that we have been given up until now, that there is an awakening that happens and we begin to perceive things in a new way. We begin to understand things in a new way. The writings of not only this book, but all of the Christian and Jewish traditional scriptures are symbolic. They are clothed with metaphors. They are mystical 
in many ways. And they invite us to understand them in that same way. There was a belief in all of these writings that God or the Christ would return soon and would rid the world of all evil. Anyone that was embodying that evil would be released and either transformed or would simply fall away. And hence, the common usage of this word apocalyptic came to being, of this time of ending. But we look what happens before that ending, and there is a series of messages that are conveyed. Many of them are to the individual churches <clears throat> that are newly forming in different parts of the region. The first was a message to Ephesus, and then Smyrna, and then the passage that we read today is read to the community in Pergamum. And the message that was sent to each of these were both a combination of chastising them for what they weren't quite doing right yet and encouraging them to step into life in a new way. When we look at trying to understand this from a metaphysical or perhaps even a mystical way, Charles Fillmore writes that this address, this passage in Revelations that we're looking at this morning tells us that Pergamum represents that intellectual part of us, that intellectual consciousness in humanity, that thinking part of us. And as we continue to discover, our intellect can be a valuable tool when it's guided and directed by our spiritual or that divine part of us. And yet it can be less helpful when directed by our ego self, that part that's only getting its information from our senses of what we're seeing and feeling and hearing and tasting and touching. It's a very limited part of the way that we can really perceive and understand life. And so this passage is really to address the intellectual part of us, if we want to look at it from that metaphysical standpoint. And it's starts out in this 12th chapter, noting that there have been many challenges that have tested our faith. Seems like it could probably be written today, um, given this past year we've been through. And then the author kind of takes them to task for continuing to worship the pagan god, Balaam. And to continue to try and follow the teachings that that community had followed before they had become Christians under Nicolaitans. Nicolaitans. Those are hard words to say, not part of our usual common day language today. Because this was a time of transition for these early Christians. And they were trying to figure out how to both merge and separate themselves from what had been the traditions in that community up until then. We have to remember that not all of the early Christians were from the Jewish tradition. Many had come from the pagan, and they didn't even have this concept of worshiping one God. They were accustomed to having various gods that they worshiped when they need different kinds of things going on in their life. But the Hebrew community had even their own challenges because they had been captured and moved and integrated with many other different societies. And there was this shifting that was happening even in the Jewish community to try and adapt and to try and be inclusive of all of the people that were living at that time for Christianity was really meant to be a place where everyone was welcome, regardless of their standing in society, regardless of their religious upbringing, regardless of how they had lived up until that moment, that everyone was welcomed as a child of God. The passage that we look at today begins like this. It says, let anyone who has an ear to listen to what Spirit is saying 
to the churches here. To everyone who conquers, I will give you some hidden manna, and I will give you a white stone, and on the white stone shall be written a new name that no one knows except for the one who receives it. You know, when we look at this first phrase of let anyone who has ears hear, listen, pay attention, it was a very common phrase that was said. Jesus said it many times. In fact, when I looked it up, there was like close to 30 different um, passages where Jesus would start out by saying, anybody who has ears, it was sort of like begging the people, please pay attention, listen to what I'm saying to you. Jesus often taught when he said this to, that we had to hear, though, in a new way. We had to hear just beyond what our ears were hearing through the sound of his voice. We had to hear with our hearts. We had to hear with a mind that was open to some new way of understanding it. And in this passage, it's clear that when we are listening to spirit, we have to also be open and willing to listen in a new way. Sometimes it's odd when we hear those voices inside of our head or we feel a feeling welling up in our heart that doesn't seem to necessarily correspond to anything that's happening outside of ourselves. But we have to know that what we're really listening for is coming from within us, not outside of us. I know for me, when I first entered into this spiritual journey, one of the biggest challenges that I experience as we begin to hear a new voice, a different voice, an internal voice, as we begin to receive messages that are different from our past conditioning, is our ability to trust them. Because there's a part of us, that intellectual part of us, that will argue, well, that's just stupid. That doesn't make any sense. You can't do that. Oh, how is that even going to be possible? And yet, this is the journey that we're each asked to embark upon if we really do want to have our eyes and our hearts opened. We have to trust in these spiritual ideas that show up for us. This is the substance that we are given. This is, even in many ways, the manna that comes for each of us. In fact, that second part of this, the writer says, bread is this hidden manna. And I love the image that Spirit gives to us that it comes in ways that aren't in the outer normal way in which we are fed. Not through the external bread, but this hidden manna that is something we can receive within. And he says, for anyone who conquers, I will give you that hidden manna. And what are we conquering? We're conquering our ability to allow just the intellect to be the way in which we are guided and the way in which we say yes. We are conquering our ability to really be able to hear this message that comes. Our human intellect will tell us to pay attention to the news. It will tell us to pay attention to the economic predictions, to the challenges that we face in the midst of a pandemic, and to believe every outer condition has the ability to change the good that we receive. But what we are here today if it's the first time to say, yes, I'm willing to try that, or to reinvigor our faith to say, yes, I remember now that I have this inner resource that's available to me at all times, and that will, when I allow it, guide me to my highest good, and will let me know what's possible, even when the outer circumstances don't necessarily say that's true. How much more secure will we feel when we know that we are able to conquer whatever shows up for us when we are guided, 
when we listen and when we follow. And then we're told that the Spirit will give us this white stone. Fillmore says, as we look at his metaphysical writings, that the white stone is faith. This is the rock in which Peter built his church upon. It wasn't necessarily a physical rock structure, but it was the rock of faith that we began this journey into greater and greater glory. Our consciousness is established in the faith of God. It is our rock. And so this is the outer reminder of that inner rock, that inner stone that we have placed our journey upon. It's a reminder that there is an everlasting foundation to rely upon, no matter how the sands may shift in our world. And it's a simple symbol of the realness of our faith. It's a way to sort of touch it and be reminded of it in our daily lives. So when the scripture says, I give you a white stone, and on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except for you. What we are saying is this new name is what comes to you, and it doesn't have to be shared with anybody. This is for you, and it is to guide and to support and to encourage you as you walk the journey this coming year. This new name is a new concept of yourself. And no one knows it, for it is unique to you. No one has to agree with it. No one has to believe it except for you. You know, every time we saw a name change in the Bible, it, signif it signified a new understanding and a new increased awareness. We see that as the people of the stories moved from one place of understanding and being into a new, they were often given a new name. And this is true for each of us too. So it is our opportunity today to see what new name Spirit is inviting us each to step into. It can be a state of being. It can be a word that you're hoping to step into in a new way in the outer world. It can simply be something that may not make sense to you right in this moment, but will as it unfolds. So we're going to play a video here of When I Pray, and I invite you to know that you have the ears to hear Spirit speaking within you. Be still and hear the new name that Spirit is writing on your white stone. Perhaps it's a new quality seeking to find expression in you. But whatever you hear, simply be willing to write it on the stone and to trust and have faith that the rest will be revealed. Feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel my heart go deeper, my heart go deeper into my God. Right here, right now. Right where I am, I pray. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. When I pray, I feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. When I pray, I feel.
Feel my soul go deeper, my soul go deeper into my God. Right here, right now, right where I am, I pray. Right here. haven't already shut your outer eyes and just taken a deep breath we're going to take just a moment to listen we'll just have a brief time in the silence and to allow whatever comes to mind and heart to be present Perhaps you've already gotten your word or words. Just hold those and ask to be guided each and every moment, each and every day, to being that full expression of them. Let's just take a moment in the silence. And as you begin to bring your awareness back to this time and space, bring with you this awareness that there is that inner guidance always waiting, always seeking to support you. You just need to take a moment, take a breath, and center your attention in your heart space to connect with it. So see how it unfolds for you in this coming year. Be aware of when and how this 
word or these words come to mind because they're there as a gentle reminder for you. Let spirit continue to guide you in becoming and embracing this new name. For me, I will just share with you because you can remind me at times. I got two. The first is heartfelt communication. This is who I'm here to be this year and clear vision. To be here for myself and I pray to be here for this community. And trust that no matter what is unfolded in your past, that this white stone, this ceremony signifies a clean slate, a new beginning, and freedom from all that has happened before. So I invite you to join with me and let's affirm and let's own that for ourselves as we move into this new year. Let's see, we're going to put it up on the screen and then we're going to speak it together. If you can read that, join with me. I am grateful that I begin this year with a clean slate. I embrace this new name given to me by spirit and celebrate my unfolding good. Thank you, God. Amen. And now comes the time when we ask for your continued support through tithing of love offerings, knowing that you contribute and tithe to where spirit leads you. And we say our offering, a blessing, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am giving, all that I am receiving, and all that I am. And if you're a first time visitor, or someone who's returning after an absence, or perhaps you just like to go on the internet and fill out forms. We encourage you to do this. Go to unity, centerofunity.org forward slash connect and fill out the connection card you find there. We'd love to know you were here today. This week's appreciation goes out to two very, very, very deserving people, Sherry Pratt and Nick Bell. Two individuals you don't see much, maybe not hear much, but if they were not here, you would not really see much or hear much. Thank you, Sherry and Nick. We love you. We bless you. We acknowledge the Christ in you. Namaste. Here's what's coming up at Center of Unity. All members should have received a renewal card in the mail. If you didn't, please contact the church office. These cards are due back at the church by December 28th in order to be a voting member at our annual meeting in January. We have another special service this week. Join us on Thursday, December 31st at 5 p.m. when we'll release what no longer serves us and invite greater good into our lives. You will not want to miss this powerful service. Every Tuesday at 11.30 a.m., Rev. Linda leads a metaphysical Bible interpretation class on Zoom. All are welcome to join. The Zoom ID is on the screen, or you can access it from our website or the Center of Unity app. It's time again for our Friday Fellowship and Fun. Join us on Zoom on January 8th when we'll celebrate Elvis's and Mary Salerno's birthday with games and fun. Caring Circles begin January 3rd. These small groups will meet weekly to foster a connection with each other and spirit as they dive deeper into the exploration of the book, Hell in the Hallway, Light at the Door. There are multiple days and times to accommodate all schedules. Space is limited, so visit centerofunity.org forward slash events to join a group. Do you pray? Have you ever questioned if you're doing it right? Is it even effective? For five Thursdays beginning January 14th, an interactive group will gather to learn how to deepen the experience of God's presence and power. Watch your email for more information about joining this group of explorers. Every Sunday, we gather on Zoom before church to say hey and catch up. Come join us from 10 to 10.25 a.m. 
The Zoom ID is on the screen or you can access it from our website or the Center of Unity app. Adult Sunday School meets on Zoom right after service. All are welcome to join. The Zoom ID is on the screen and you can access it from our website or the Center of Unity app. It has never been easier to give. We have five ways to which you can donate to Center of Unity. You can drop your donation off at the church, mail it to our post office box, visit our website or the Center of Unity app, or you can simply text 817-606-8768 and follow the prompts. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. We want to thank everybody for being here again today. Reverend Linda, thank you so much for that inspiring word this morning. We hope that each of you got that message and that thing that you could write on your stone that's going to take you through the new year. So, Bob, why don't we do our peace song together? Let there be peace on earth and let it with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God as our father family all are we let me walk with my family the moment now with every step I take let this be my joy spell to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally let there be peace on earth And so as we go into this day, into this new week, into this new year, we go knowing that we have been given a new way to be and to express in our world. And we do it all knowing our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God, and the presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Have a beautiful week. See you here on New Year's Eve. Yeah.